Hey, what's going on? It's a beautiful morning here in Illinois. Good time to talk about impact in. Hey, 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 what it do? It's BQ. This is the Impact Lounge a YouTube channel. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you're a first timer, consider hitting that subscribe button. It is the number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. So first thing I wanted to talk about was Impact on Twitch. Impact is going to remain on Twitch when they move to Access TV. And I was kind of embarrassed because the last video I uploaded, I was saying I wasn't sure what was going to happen with that. And right as that video is uploading, I'm reading a press release saying that it's going to be on Twitch. So I did my best to try to update the description of the video, say something in the comments. But for those of you who like to watch Impact on Twitch, that is how I've been watching it up till now. Uh, it's still will remain an option for you. Speaking of Twitch, Operation Override was last night. Um, we really really need to start supporting these Impact shows on Twitch. They used to do a few thousand people when they first started happening. Right now, I want to say it capped out at 710 last night, and I understand why. For quite some time, we had audio issues, video issues. A couple of the shows, like the Pentagon Junior one, uh, Zero Fear, that, that show's unwatchable. Several of the shows are unwatchable. Totally unwatchable and uh, they're doing a lot better so when they did Unbreakable that show actually came off really really well uh, last night Operation Override you know the crowd was they're, they're, the, the crowd is not mic'd at all for these because remember these are house shows so you can't hear anything what's going on so it's very loud with the commentary but Scott Newmore was on color commentary to me he's way fucking better than Don Callis is so I enjoy listening to him a lot more he's a lot more consistent in what he does, he doesn't switch from babyface to heel throughout the show, you know what I mean? So I really like what he does, and the commentary is good. Um, and for what it was, this was this was the worst crowd I've ever seen in an Impact show. No shit. Um, it probably capped out at 150 people um, at, at max. When the show started, there was probably 100 people there. So, you know, it kind of filled out, the lights got dimmer. But in the first couple matches, it was, it was fairly obvious that no one was there. And this was talked about on Twitter with a lot of fans. I said, whoa, the, the, the seats aren't filling for this thing. I think they did a poor job of promotion. You know, when an indie promotion promotes a show, they can, they can do it on social media. They can do it on Facebook because they're always in the same place. And the people who follow it are, are from there. But with, so with a company like Impact, their social media, they got people all over the world. So you can't just rely on social media to get that word out. And I just have a hard time believing, because I don't think they partnered with a local promotion on this one. I have a hard time promo uh, uh, believing that they really got uh, did the, the ground root, grassroot type of promotion. That being said, though, for what it's worth, the crowd was engaged for, for what it had. But it, it was pretty, it was difficult to watch. Um, and with only 700 people watching on Twitch. we got to start supporting these shows on Twitch. They're not difficult to watch. The matches aren't incredibly long. And the matches happen very quickly. So there's not a whole lot of promo time. Rohit Raju, Raju cut a great promo though. Something we don't get to see so much of on Impact. But he cut a really good promo last night. So, you know, consider watching these shows and supporting the company. It's really important. Alright, last thing I want to say. Impact... Announce another match for Bound for Glory. This one's a little bit random. It's the Rascals versus Dr. Wagner Jr. and two partners of his choosing. So no build up to it whatsoever. Dr. Wagner, uh, up until a year ago, used to wear a mask. He lost to El Hijo del Fantasma. Uh, he got unmasked at Triple Mania last year. Uh, legendary competitor. And Bound for Glory is really different this year. You know, we're just we're getting some international talent, and um, I kind I, I kind of like where it's going just because it's different. I'm. Some people are not jazzed about it so far. I'm, I'm a big fan of matches I've never seen before. That is what gets, that's what gets me aroused. It's a good way to get the Rascals on the card because, you know, they were in a title picture for a little bit. They had a match with the North, which was a masterpiece. And then they kind of went back to comedy and doing stuff that didn't matter. So now we get the Rascals on the card. And um, if there's some, if we get some high flags, I would imagine we're probably going to get Tejano Jr., Maybe Golden Magic. I mean, probably people we're, we're prominently seeing on these set of tapings. That's what I'm guessing. I don't think it's going to be uh, they're going to announce that Bound for Glory because the local crowd might not be too familiar with who it is or that might not really pop for them. You know what I mean? So I think we're going to know in advance 
Uh, it's a triple uh, six-man tag trios match. It's probably going to open Bound for Glory. That's that's my guess. I don't think whatever the X Division is doing is going to open it because I'm starting to think Tesla's going to challenge for the X Division Championship. So uh, I don't know. It's cool to me just because it's different. It's something different, and we got to be, you know, have an open mind for those kind of things. And once again, thanks for checking me out here at the Impact Lounge YouTube channel. I'm going to talk to you soon. Peace.